there. My name is Brent, and this is the Union Mine here at Cerro Gordo. And back in the 1800s, this mine, this shaft, was the largest producer of silver for the state of California. Over $500 million of the minerals came out of this hole. There's over 30 miles of mine off of this main shaft right here. So typically, when I go out in this mine, I take this cage 900 feet straight down. This week, I will be taking rope to the very bottom to hopefully get into levels seemingly forgotten to time. It is going to be quite the adventure, so let's get into it. All right, so my initial mission in this adventure was to rappel, to rope down 900 feet. That is the entirety of the Union Mine. And the Union Mine is by far the biggest mine here at Cerro Gordo. And off of that 900 feet branch is close to 30 miles of mines that just honeycomb everywhere underneath this town. And for the past three years, every single time that I've gone into the Union Mine, I have used the hoist. So I have used a cage that dangles off of a cable that has to get lowered down by a whole crew of people. It takes three or four guys to dedicate their afternoon to send a cage down. The people that are able to operate the hoist have dwindled. Some of my friends have moved farther away, some have changed locations, and at this point, I don't really have a crew that consistently send me down into the mine. So that means I am blocked from entering what is pretty much my favorite place here. Under a month ago, a guy named Robert Sloan came to town, and Robert is a historian by hobby and kind of by trade that for the last few years has been researching Cerro Gordo from afar. And when he came here, he presented all sorts of new things. It seems that there's potentially four levels below the 900 foot level. Looking at the maps and researching it more, it would seem that one of these levels, maybe the first level off of the 900 foot level, would be at an 1130 level, which would indicate a drop of 230 feet. So that would potentially, in my mind, think, was there a second hoist down there at some point? Was there a whole many miles of mines that have just been lost, not really talked about? It's just such an important part of the history here. Nobody alive has been into them, and it's just this mystery that is just too good to give up, you know? It's just enough to prompt me to order 950 feet of rope and to think about ways to get to these levels. All right, I'm heading down the hill, so I'm picking up something very exciting. That is 950 feet of rope. Now, many of you have always asked, why don't you just use the ladder? The ladder's broken for like 20 foot stretches, so that's not a good idea. Some of you have asked, why don't you repel? Because I'm terrified of repelling down a 900 foot hole. Imagine a 90 story building. Imagine putting on a rope and a harness and then just looking over the edge of a 90 story building and then just slowly letting yourself down the side of it. I think over the times here, I got a little bit more comfortable with ropes. You know, I've roped down a 300 foot shaft that had nothing to put your feet onto and you're just dangling in a void. I've roped down the Jefferson chimney, the main ore body here. I've gone at least 700 feet down that on ropes, going on old sketchy ledges around old ladders that are really dangerous. And so my repulsion to the idea of rappelling down 900 feet has eased, let's say, over the last three years. Tomorrow, I have a delivery of a rock blaster to help me get past some potential collapses. Stay tuned. We have a big, big adventure. All right, there it is. There's the rope. This is key to our adventure. I'm not going to open it down here, but this is 950 feet of static rope. And I just dropped off this. This is our blaster. Let's take it inside the Keeler property, check it out. Now, obviously dynamite you cannot have unless you have a blasting license, but rock blasters, it's like just underneath that, uh, that gray area, so to speak, and they are designed to break big rocks at construction sites. And essentially they work like dynamite did back in the day. You know, I've known I've gotten to collapses where big rocks have fallen, they're too big for me to move, but if I were to blow up these rocks, be able to move them, then potentially I could get to areas they had never gotten to before. And we have the micro blaster. In addition to that, we have explosives. This is what's going to get us into the lower below 900 level, is these little capsules here. And this bad boy, when you put one of these 
at the end. Boom! Awesome. All right, the time has come to send this rope down this hole. So again, I'll get a light this time and give you a little idea. So I'm gonna try to run it down this ladder. So the ladder does go down a long ways, but it's broken in many spots. There's 10 foot sections that are out. And if you look up, I would want it then directly centered, which there's nothing great to tie off to. This is just nailed in. So move this bucket over. Just gotta weigh 300, 400 pounds. Now, I know people are gonna freak out about a movable tie-off point, but I've tied off to the sagebrush before, so this is an improvement over that. The main thing that I was concerned about was just the amount of gear that I was gonna have to bring down, and I needed more rope. The day before, I started thinking more about the descent, so I decided to do a little trial run. And on this trial run, I learned 950 feet of rope is very heavy. And so the type of descender that I have kind of coils the rope through it in order to allow it to create, you know, friction and to slow you down as you're going down. But to do that, it needs a loose end. It can't be extremely tight rope. And so the descender I had would not allow me to descend down with so much rope weight below me. And so after a little bit of thinking, I realized that I was gonna need a few spans of rope. And so, Went down to Lone Pine, got another 200 feet of rope. And so with that, I started kind of piling everything together. This morning, I am taking the first descent down to the 900 level. And I'm a little bit nervous just because the amount of gear that I have to bring. I'm bringing down multiple ropes to hopefully bring me further down the rope where the rope weight won't be a problem, which means I don't have to tie off at different points. I also have to bring the rock blaster to potentially break up any rock, get past the collapse to get down to these two lower mythical levels that we have to get to. And the problem is over here, if you look, is that some of these areas down this shaft get very tight. And so this is gonna have to be going below me. Obviously I have to bring a bunch of water gear, you know, lights, stuff like that. So momentarily put on this harness and down the hole. All right, so this is the stuff that'll be below me. I don't think you can see, it's rigged like that. So we have rock drill, another 200 feet of rope, rock blaster below that. All that hopefully going below me down the hole. And uh, that's that. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> Oh man, did my light already go out? So, okay. all right, do my best. My pack's already stuck. My nail. And so I started down, and I would stay very quickly. I realized the claustrophobia that would haunt me a little bit later on. Woo! All right, that's terrifying. Yeah, I'm just uh, past the tight spot. There's one more about 10 minutes away, so I might radio once I get past that. Yeah. All right, that's fucked up. Oh, gross. Made it down to the 86. So that's the 86. Oh, and up. Up and down. So, 820 feet to go. That's crazy. I can't get through, so I'm trying to figure out a way through this tight spot. Okay, just checking. Yep. 10. Let me see. What am I doing here? 
very first box I got to, which wasn't one of the narrowest ones, immediately my shoulders were just compressed by how small this box was. And when your shoulders being compressed, you're on a rope 900 feet below you, it was terrifying, but it was also invigorating at the same time. All right, so just below the 86, it's too tight to get through here. So I have to go back into the main shaft, which is scary, but that's why I think the only way past this tight spot, which hopefully then I can swing back to the ladder afterwards, but this is too tight in here. So I have to go out there. All right, next check-in, we are at the 200 level. You can see it's all boarded up and that's where we snuck in above it. So the view up, looking longer, 200 feet down, 700 feet to go. The rope weight on this is still way too much for the descender to work right. So I think once I get to the end of this rope, I have to find somewhere else to tie off to with this rope in the bag below me. And I keep going down and hope that this is good to go back up. Come on. God damn. So as I was making my way down, I was finally able to relax a little bit right around when I came to the end of my first 200 foot rope. So I had the rest of the rope dangling in a rope bag below me that I needed to somehow secure to something safe. I needed to then lower down my next rope. Then I needed to transfer from the rope I was on to the other rope. And during all the kind of confusion over what to hook into, what not to hook into, I ended up dropping my rock blaster. All right, so I am changed over to the next rope. A rope change mid descent is never very fun, but uh, we're probably about, I don't know, 300 feet down now, maybe 250. Still too much weight on that cord. So I'm gonna go to the end of this next one. I unfortunately, in the transition there, I lost a rock drill, or no, I lost the power blaster. I have the rock drill. So I'm hoping that's still in decent shape when we get down there. <sighs> Hard work. You know, this thing that I was so excited about, you know, that I dropped before I even got to the very bottom. And it was just <laughs> hilarious and annoying at the same time. All right, we're getting down there. I'm probably about 500 feet down and I'm onto the last green rope. It's hard going right now because the rope weight below me is still a lot. My uh, head mount GoPro ran out of batteries. So I'm hoping that this descent goes smoothly with this thing. It's a lot of pressure on this descender right now. But as you can see, still a lot to go, but we've come a long ways. At first I was using the ladder a decent amount and then I realized the ladder was just kind of slowing me down. Then I kind of got to like descending pretty good. Then I felt like excited. So I found myself just getting a little bit more loose with how fast I was descending, you know? I was really kind of going along. And the only time that I would really stop is when I would see pieces of things that I dropped. By the end, I was having a blast. I have to say that I was having just like this fully free and enjoyable time just going down, just with the highest expectations of everything to come. You know, with the idea that who knows, you know, that unknown exploration feel that just, I don't know, always puts me in the best mood. All right, folks, I have made it to the bottom, 900 feet down on rope. And it looks to me like our blaster, let's check it out, may still be operational. 
And once again, welcome back to the 900 foot level. Woo! All right, folks, we did it. We are down 900 feet into the Cerro's Union Mine, only by using rope. Was terrified to do it, but we got down here and it looks like most of our gear is intact. Now, again, I've been in the 900 before. Yes, we're gonna look around, we're gonna see some things, but really what we're after is new history. And that new history would be two new levels, an 1130 and a 1250 level below the 900. Nobody since this mine is shut down has been down to these lower levels. They're just an anomaly. There's lots of lore around them. There's few facts, but that's what we're down here for. That's what we just spent three hours getting down this rope to do. So let me drink a little water, collect myself. Let's go find some new history. And so luckily when I got to the bottom, I had pretty clear instructions on where to go. Robert, who had shown me the maps originally, had given me like street directions basically to exactly where this connection to a lower level should be. All right, let's go find this lower level. So now we gotta go this way and we should go about 140 feet before we hit a cross intersection running perpendicular from this main tunnel. It's the four way intersection exactly as described. So through this, we should have to go 290 feet more that way before getting to another three-way intersection. But you can see this moisture is here. So there's the potential that we need to go 290 feet this way. And as we went back this way, something I put here long ago <laughs> is still here. That is a 1 million subscriber plaque from YouTube. It's still looking in very good shape. It's got some cool crystallization going on. So I still need to go probably another 250 feet this way. And we're looking for a three-way intersection with a tunnel headed to the right. Oh boy, here we go. So we're probably 100 feet back. And at least just collapse. That's not to say I can't go over this collapse. Oh, maybe I cannot go over this collapse. And this type of dirt, <sighs> the rock blasters isn't gonna help very much with. This type of dirt is like clay. I wonder, I see a little hole. I am gonna peek up there. But at this point, we need another probably 190 feet, probably almost 200 feet more before we would get to the intersection that would lead us to the lower levels. So I am going to go up there. Now again, this collapse can only be five feet deep. So we dig through it into there. But I was hoping to get a lot further than this before reaching a intersection like this. So this is just manpower. This is just digging and digging, but let's scoot up here. So slippery, can't even get grip to get up there. The problem right now is I'm just slipping and sliding on this. But a lot of times with these collapses, they're only 10 feet, so you can get up and over them and continue on. So we're gonna keep trying that. But again, I probably have 200 feet to go before I get to this intersection that would have led to the winds to the lower levels. So if it's 200 feet of this clay, not gonna be very possible. The blaster isn't gonna help much given this. I'm gonna need a shovel and it's a lot of time. You know, I do have a bed at the 700 foot level um, where I could camp out the night. I'd be down to even sleep down here for four or five days and just dig all day long to see how long it would take me to get through this collapse. But before we think up through all that, let's try to get up and over this thing. And then there was one other way that potentially led back to it, the other way out of the cage. We'll go check that out. Hey, come on. Looking pretty collapsed. This is gonna take a lot of digging. You know, we need 200 more feet to get through, but this could be 10 feet, this collapse, this collapse could be 200 feet. And we know, we know we need to go 200 feet to get to where the cage was down. And if you think, if it was descending 230 feet down, there could be tons of machinery over there. I mean, just stuff that no one even knew about 
and just history. Obviously that was disappointing. You know, I was hoping that it was going to be a few blasts. I was going to pass. I was going to find a whole new hoist system. Maybe I was going to find where mules had once stayed down in the 900 foot level. And the wet rock was like a wet towel on my adventure. So right now we're headed north off that first intersection we got to. So I'll pace it on the way going back too. But this one is, there's a winds up there. I think that's where we are with the Diesel Brothers. I wonder if that's potentially a different way into that same area. That seems like it's leading back that way. So obviously it's getting much more collapsed the further we go like this way. The rock in this level can be very much like clay. And again, with shovels, dig this out. <sighs> Dead end. <sighs> so far, not seeing a lot of hard rock that would make sense to blow up to get out of the way. It's just this clay that I don't think that the Glass would have tons of success getting any quicker through. This could potentially lead that same way. Uh, uh. Oof. Uh. Fun level though. Right here is this intersection. We're gonna cross over into the map upstairs. We're now going this way. And it says this way out, which I don't know that I believe. We go this way, it appeared to off to the right, another winds down that potentially got to another level. This way I remember being very collapsed. To the right, I remember them backfilling it quite heavy. Now this would be straight off and back the shaft. Ugh. Very low ceilings. You can see they're using some big timbers here. Oh, so again, passable with time, but just they're obviously concerned about something and that's what they were concerned about. That much collapse. Ugh. Down this section, there's a lot of dynamite, as you can tell right there. Possibly more where I'm standing. This area seems to be collapsed as well. You can look at that. So I'm 900 feet down here, and so this has been a game changer, whether I'm on a mine exploration like this, or up in the town has just been element. I bring this stuff pretty much everywhere. It's just potassium, magnesium, sodium. It's a very easy to use electrolyte supplement. They've been a huge supporter of the town over the last few years. And I just love it. If you wanna try this out, they're giving everybody watching a free eight sample pack. All you have to do is go to drinkelement.com slash Brent. So drinklmnt.com slash B-R-E-N-T and they're gonna give you a free sample pack with any purchase. If you don't like it, send it back. No questions asked. They're gonna give you a refund, but it's been huge for me. I think it can help a lot, a lot of you guys and uh, hope you give it a shot. We're back to the hoist, my blaster, my rock drone, all that. A few things. One, I was able to get down here with rope only, which was very, very, very cool. You know, I've been afraid of heights pretty much my whole life. So to be dangling with a 900 foot of exposure below you is something that I'm just proud that I made it down here. Two, it seems that the way that the hoists were to go to these lower, lower levels has about 170 feet behind the collapse. I know that the blaster that I brought down is not gonna do tons of good given the type of rock that's back there. You know, this needs to be dug out by shovels. Um, I think I can send some shovels down by some string. 
potentially. My plan was to stay down here for as long as it took to get through that collapse, just blasting away and moving rock. Now seeing that it's more of a clay substance, I need to alter my strategy a little bit. But I think the main thing that's accomplished in this route was just the fact that it can be done, that I can get down here by rope. That's huge. That is gonna open up so many opportunities long-term. But with that, I think today, I'm gonna pack up, drink some more water, head back up and regroup. <sighs> This hole is too narrow to get through. So as we continue going up, it's gonna to be too narrow to get through. So to climb on the outside, but the rope's on the inside. So I am gonna to have to switch ropes, which I didn't want to do. sitting there towards the end and just thinking this isn't it this isn't the end of this exploration obviously there's been a lot of dead ends at Cerro Gordo over the last few years for the longest time I ran into a dead end with the cement trucks coming up the hill to pour the cement until Dave Sparks came and proved it was possible we've had the road flood and get washed out that could have been the dead end of the progress of the hotel for the year we don't let that make it a dead end and so I think that there's always this constant tension between dead ends and progress. And as time's progressed here, it's been harder to make progress because I've reached more dead ends. But I think that time and time again, I've proven that pushing past those dead ends has led to something amazing, has led to the continuation of this journey that has been Cerro Gordo. It just builds your confidence and your self-esteem that pushing yourself beyond your comfort zone is something that I've been thinking about a lot recently. Right now, my plan as it stands is to go down there, clear a big area for a base camp, figure out the logistics of sending a lot of supplies down there. I'm thinking supplies to exist for three or four days, you know, cots, canned goods, water. Can we run electricity down there? Can we run a hard communication lines? You know, this isn't the end of the 900 foot exploration. This is actually just the beginning of it. And so right now, obviously I'm riding on a pretty good high of what we're gonna do next. But I think before I go down there again, which I hope to do in the next day or two, I'm gonna check in with Robert. You know, and Robert is the historian that sent me down there to begin with, with his idea of the four levels. I'll go over the findings that we have so far, and I'll hopefully develop a plan of where we're gonna go from there. Hey Robert, how's it going? Uh, hey Brent, it's, uh, it's going pretty good, how about you? Pretty good, um, I wanted to kinda cut right to the chase and update you on the, the 900 level expedition that I just went on. Yeah, I heard, uh, I heard you, you had a little trip and I was excited to get that update. You know, we'd identified this as the access route, uh, route to get to it. Yep. But I had missed something, and I want to show you that because I think it's um, a, a big deal. Uh, yeah, right here. They actually uh, have it detailed. Whoa. Uh, it appears up to the 700 from the 900. With this, maybe on my next trip down, I stop by the 700 first and then go and see if there's something in that vicinity that would have led down. I mean, I, I get that drawings simplify life, but you should have a basically a, you know, a vertical shaft, uh, yeah. 200 feet that you should be able to go down and reach the 900 from the 700, which is pretty cool. You actually see a stagger here. So it, it looks like, I'll try to get back over here. Uh, it, it looks like 
maybe there's a stagger below these layers, but it goes down to this uh, this red this red layer that's much right. larger. That was uh, it appears to be more fully developed uh, during the the Gordon times, the Gordon era. This idea of getting to these lower levels is just consuming me at this point. And so the knowledge that Robert passed on that the 700 potentially leads to the 900, then down to the 1100 is huge. You know, I've been in that level so many times that if there is a vertical shaft, it's gonna be behind some collapse. You know, my biggest concern right now is getting all the supplies down there. If we're not using the hoist, if we're not using this thing behind me, then everything that goes down there needs to go down on a rope. And obviously it's gonna be a very heavy load. So I'm thinking that I need to utilize existing materials down there, whether that's wood to potentially build shelves, beds, things like that. But no matter what, we're gonna find some new areas and we're gonna make some more history. All right, I'm back up here in the hoist house, ready to go back down the hole. And I kinda like the system we got going on. You know, I'm going down and actively keeping track of everything I see in a much better way than I did before. Coming back up, I send it off to Robert or maybe some other historians. He sends me back info that he's found out since the last time I went down. You know, in between me going down last time and going back down, we now know that there's five levels below the 900 foot level. There's not just two, there's not just one, there's actually five. And this was found in a investor prospectus that Robert found. So I'm gonna get changed, head down there, and we are gonna see what we can find, and we're gonna see what the future holds. made it down to the 700 foot level. And again, this is gonna be the first stop. We're gonna go back here. I'm gonna to try to see if I can find that connection from the 700 to the 900 that Robert pointed out in the prospectus. We are headed back that way in search of hopefully an easier way down. Then we continue down. That could have been that left-hand turn that we were looking for, or here, or potentially, if we go back here, this is an ore chute that means they're obviously mining above it. And this could have gone below too. This could be the way down, but not today. I have a feeling that this is it, or this is the way that they used to get lower because these chutes would indicate going above and you can see it was bringing it all the way down. But again, go down here, take this out. Who knows what that could lead to. You could tell that there was some serious timbering here that has been collapsed by some massive rocks. And this one, for instance, over here, I wonder if this was the uh, way down as well, or this was the way down. These aren't moving. Well, the rock blaster or something. This is where the rock blaster could come in handy. Break those up. This might just be more digging well, it doesn't look like we're getting down to the nine from the 700. I think for now we're gonna go back to the nine, take a peek around again, start kind of clearing the area that's gonna be the base camp for our kind of big adventures. First, I wanted to 3D map part of the mine. I think the gain of dimensions and comparing to those that we are operating with would be important. You know, the USGS did a report in the 60s on Cerro Gordo, and it is kind of the Bible, so to speak, for the Union Mine. And it has a scale on it, but I've always wondered how accurate that scale was. And so I wanted to go down there with Polycam, which is using LiDAR information to kind of capture the dimensions as we go, to compare that 
to the scale that they have from the USGS to make sure that when we say we have to dig through 50 feet of collapse to get to this next area, that it's actually 50 feet. It doesn't end up being, you know, 500 feet or something like that. I'm gonna do a quick 3D map from this intersection to the next intersection. So that way we have some dimensions to determine whether the dimensions that we're using off of Google Earth are working. So with that, let's get back into it. This is gonna be base camp. All this needs to get cleared out, figure out what wood is usable, what wood isn't. I was trying to make a room that was flat. My clearing of the debris ended when I moved one log and just this huge 12 by 12 beam just landed on my shoulder. And immediately I just thought myself <laughs> clenching up, trying to essentially like squat this heavy beam that didn't happen, so I moved out of the way. Um, I think it could have hit me in the head. It could have been a lot worse, um, but after that, I realized, hey, you know, uh, I think I've cleared what I can clear on my own. These 12 by 12, 10 foot long timbers, you're gonna need some help when I get down there. All right, so as I started clearing what will become base camp, you know, this is where I'm gonna create some beds here. We're gonna create some shelving. We're gonna live down here for days, really. I'm gonna get to that in a little bit. But I found some cool stuff. I found this, which I've never seen before. It is a uh, maybe between little cigars between or the something little cigars there might be a cigar still in here oh wow it says uh mr smoker i'm smoking between the acts don't draw hard just puff lightly then you'll enjoy to the fullest the extent the mildness and fragrance of these little cigars between Axe is the name of the cigar company. But there does appear to be a little bit of tobacco still in there. And that's really cool. So that was in there. 900 level. Use phone when in trouble. Ring, one long ring to the mine engineer. Don't use bell unless phone won't ring. That is awesome. <laughs> that was just under a lot of debris over there. So I'm gonna keep clearing a little bit, but some pretty cool finds already just in the rubble. Oh uh, yeah, when I found this stuff, I found this too, which is one of the highest quality pieces of glue I've seen. You can tell by how close those crystals are. That's a lot of silver content. So they're gonna pull some really good stuff out here. I might take this up actually and assay it so you can get an idea of how, just how find the quality is coming out of here but that was one of the best pieces i've ever seen all right so that's gonna be it this week i have gotten to the point where i need some help moving these big timbers i am going to create a camp here where a few people can come down we can spend the time needed to get into these lower levels five of them we know now know as well as map this level with using polycam and stitch it all together so i want to create a space where it's going to be possible to live down here, you know, for a few days. To do that too, I'm going to need a team. So if you have any recommendations on who I should bring down here, um, they need to be very experienced with mines, they need to be very experienced with rope, and very experienced in just generally chaotic settings, plus have the desire to dig through a bunch of collapses. It feels like every week up here recently we've just been discovering more and more history, and every trip down here I find something new, and hopefully preserve something for future generations to look back on too. I think if we can get into these lower five levels, it's gonna unlock all sorts of information that we didn't know about this mine before. With that, I'm signing out. Thank you guys, as always, for checking out these videos. I hope to see you on the next adventure. If you have any recommendations who to bring down here, let me know. I'm gonna drink some more water, some element, and start climbing 900 feet back up. So until next time, see you guys. Thank you all so, so much for watching this video.